How's everyone liking the show so far? Oh, not bad, not bad energy for the last panel. My name is Jared Grimm. I am not an AI bot, but I may have hallucinated a little bit in my early 20s from time to time, so. We're gonna do a panel today on the power of generative AI in scaling your partnerships. But first, I wanna do a little audience survey. Um, ChatGPT was introduced in like November 2022, so let's say, you know, under two years ago. Who in this room has used Gen AI to either like create an image or help write an article or anything along those lines in the last, uh, ever? Put your hands up. <laughs> Isn't that insane? Like something comes around less than two years ago and virtually everyone in this room has used it in some capacity. I think that's just like a power of a technology to get adopted that quickly is pretty incredible. So I'd like to introduce you to our fabulous panel. Uh, I'll have each of you introduce yourselves. Uh, if you can give an idea on your role, a little bit about your company, and then one thing that ChatGPT does not know about you. So why don't we start, we'll start with you, Sam. All right. Well. Hello, everyone. Great to meet everyone. Excited to be here. Uh, my name is Sam. I'm an adoption consultant here at uh, Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense has a slew of products. Uh, we've got intent data, contact data. I work primarily on the conversational email side of things. Uh, I came from a small company called Saleswell before my time at Sixth Sense. We were 15 people strong based out of APAC, but I was hired in as our first US hire to grow the business here. Um, we were eventually acquired by Sixth Sense, and that eventually became the conversational email platform that I'll be talking about today. And I spend most of my time working with customers, getting them to uh, onboard our product and uh, work with them on their Gen AI, Gen AI journey. So my, and by the way, I love the way they ask about what ChatGPT doesn't know about us, because I feel like that's just like a professional or nerdy way of asking, like, what's our fun fact? For Which sure. I haven't been asked since, like, freshman orientation or summer <laughs> camps or anything like that. But uh, my, one of the things that I like to do outside of work is I'm actually a, a, a basketball official, so I officiate uh, high school and collegiate basketball games. And so I, uh, I, I enjoy doing that. I enjoy playing basketball, but, you know, I can't, my height, you know, can't really make it too far. So... The way I can help back and give back to the community is officiate some games. And so we'll see where that takes me. Um, I do it, I know this is being recorded, so Sixth Sense, I do it after work. It's <laughs> after work hours, games are generally you know, 7.30 or so. But we'll see where it takes me. I enjoy it a lot. And I will say this though, um, basketball officiating, I, I do talk to a lot of players, coaches, fans, um, I, I, parents sometimes, I hear you guys out there sometimes. So, But one of the things that I've learned is how to talk to people. You know, you have to get your point across, you gotta articulate what we're doing, and a lot of that translates over to the professional side of things, and um, I, I do work with a lot of customers, and I do think that has helped me in my career professionally as well. So, but that's what I do outside of, outside of work, and yeah, that's, I think, one thing that ChatGPT doesn't know about me. Very cool. Suruchi? Yeah, hi everybody, I'm Suruchi. I am um, the VP of Marketing at Minted, and for those of you who don't know us, we are a premium stationery provider. Um, we work with about 15,000 artists globally who design for us, uh, and you would use us for your wedding invitations, your holiday cards, but also for art and home decor. So you can find um, paintings, sculptures, you know, unique pieces that you would come and buy from us. Um, prior to Minted, I ran marketing for a company called Tailored Brands, the flagship brand there being the men's warehouse. Uh, but majority of my career has been uh, in running uh, e-commerce and marketing teams at some of the tech giants. Uh, Google, Apple, uh, and Nest. Uh, I'll keep it short on what ChatGPT does not know about me. It's a question you cannot ask ChatGPT. Uh, but I hate shoes. I actually, um, <laughs> yeah, I actually did an experiment once where I went barefoot for six months um, and just learned so much about how the world works and where I can go in or not. But yeah, that's kind of my thing. I hate wearing shoes. How funny is it that I, I, know, just, I just was over there. I'm like, I love your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and you said, you're like, thank you. And then I kept talking about your shoes a lot, too long. Yeah. That's great. Hey, everybody. Peter, go ahead. Um, I'm Peter Orlowski. I'm the Strategic Partnerships uh, SVP at Getty Images. Um, I'm sure many of you all have heard of Getty Images. Uh, we are a global visual 
content marketplace and um, creators. And basically, for us, we have three brands. You have Getty Images, which everyone knows. We have iStock, which is for our small businesses. And we have Unsplash, which is for the creator economy. Um, we work with many, many partners. We have about 300 premium partners, like BBC or Bloomberg. And we have about a half a million individual contributors. And um, they also help there. And then we have one of the largest private archives in the world. We have a staff. Uh, we also go to market with um, uh, people today that will come out and help us you know, grow our businesses anyway. We've also developed recently uh, a new AI program, which I'm here to talk about a little bit more. Uh, my thing that ChatGPT doesn't know is um, I love pizza, and I'm hoping to open a pizzeria one day. Oh, yeah. yeah? Nice. That's cool. Well, just as far as, and I want to see how many times, we should do a drinking game where every time someone says Gen AI, you have to do a drink, a little early, in an hour. So keep track, and that's how many you have to well, start with. this is with. an AI panel. We're, we're yeah, I know, you've got to say it a few times. It's a hard word to say, though. That's one already. So. Yeah, there you go. I didn't go. say Gen. Oh, okay. There. <laughs> um, I used it, I'll give you an example of where I used it, even just for this. So researching you guys, that's the part I didn't know about you guys, obviously, based on the shoe comments earlier. I didn't find that out from Gen AI. Um, I used it for some potential questions. And then actually the walkout music, we used uh, an app called Suno.ai to create that song through Gen AI. So that was cool. So that's why it said Getty Images and Sixth Sense and minted in the song. So if you were listening carefully, you would have heard that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really curious about how you're using Gen AI, either in like your workflow, you know, speeding up your teams, or in the products yourself. So Saruchi, I know that at Minted, you've started using Gen AI within the team. I'd love to learn a little bit more about that and share that with the audience. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, everybody's been using Gen AI to do copywriting and images. Um, but there are two use cases that I thought were quite interesting in the way we have uh, deployed it. We, um, when you create a holiday card with us, you typically upload a family picture. Uh, and when people do that, they used to reach out to our customer service, which is a specific team inside customer service called Design Operations. They would reach out to them and say, could you help us retouch the picture? Can you remove this person from my picture, remove a car from the picture, things like that. So it was a very human heavy um, undertaking, right? And, and during the holiday time, which is really crazy times for a company like us, uh, it took a lot of manpower to do this. We partnered with a, a tech <coughs> giant uh, who does these things, I won't name names. And we brought that tool in-house uh, last year uh, in Q4. And um, you know, most of these tools um, you know, also get, take care of the copyright issues. That's why we work with this uh, brand. But they are very good about um, background expansion, background refilling, retouching of the images. Uh, and you can now do this within seconds. Like you don't need a human power to do that. Uh, and that's actually um, just changed the game on our side, especially in a quarter that's very uh, human intense. intense. The second use case that we, and this actually happened for us before Gen AI became a Gen AI, so there you go, two drinks. There you go. Um, but a few years ago, so we uh, have our art and home business, and we sell paintings. And so when uh, you um, show imagery of that kind, people want to see the paintings in situ, right? They want to see it next to a sofa or a bed and things like that. But uh, if I was to go do a photo shoot for every situation and every frame and things like that, that's enormous amount of expense. So we started partnering with this company called Cloudinary, uh, who built a, a service uh, for us. They take our base image, and then they generate uh, all the in-situ imagery, but they also generate different kind of frame types, you know, frame finishes and things like that. And that's the images we use on our PDPs. Um, so that's like a huge, both a cost saving, resource saving, and just the speed of speed to launch to um, a product to market is tremendous. Yeah, and I imagine like some of that, you're reducing the amount of hours the team has to spend on it. But there's probably, you wouldn't have even had the ability to do it at the scale that you're doing it at now in that way. So that's very cool. Uh, Peter, I know that you've brought Gen AI into the Getty Images iStock product. You guys have released a feature recent, recently. And I read a survey from eMarketer that says 36% of e-commerce marketers today use Gen AI to create images. And there's some other tools out there. So you nicely mentioned one without even saying the name of it or anything along those lines. But there are some tools out there. What would you say makes the approach that Getty Images is taking different? Maybe explain what the product is first and, yeah. then, and then go from there. No, that's a great question. Thanks for asking. So um, Getty Images has 
created a text image generation tool. It's generative images by getting uh, generative AI by getting images. And um, the key thing for us is what we've done is it's all trained on our high quality um, library, which is all released, it's all clear, and basically it's safe. So it's responsible for all end users to have the opportunity to be able to go to market and feel safe that there's no risk for them. You know, we've seen people going out to market and you know, using anything out there. There's others that claim to be doing things the right way, but you know, what we've really put you know, our, our muscle behind is basically training off of a library that is 100% clean, model released, high quality. And it doesn't you know, violate any IP. It doesn't violate anybody's protections. You know, it doesn't know who LeBron James is. So if you put in LeBron James, you don't get anything. Um, if you want to see a sneaker with Nike, it doesn't know who <coughs> Nike is. It'll return a sneaker, and it'll be this great sneaker. But um, you know, we went out that way because we think that's what brands and everybody need to be, to be safe. And what we're hearing now is that um, that's how they want to go to market. The biggest things we're hearing is that teams want to make sure that when they use things that they're not going to have these issues. So for us, it was very important to do that. Um, we know that a lot of people out there say they're doing things like that, but they're not. And we also know that you know, by doing this now, um, we're showing that people it can be done that way, where a lot of people were saying that you can't just do it on only trained, you know, cleared content. That's cool. So the model itself is using all this like commercially safe, approved imagery to create the new imagery that's coming out of the system. Is that basically how it works? That's correct. So basically off of all of our library that's <coughs> been created, um, high quality, diversity, you know, authentic imagery, we're using that as the inputs to using prompts to create outputs with AI, which allows it to also be utilized in a way where it's putting out modern and relevant content, but also stuff that you can use and feel safe. Yeah, love that. So let's stay on the topic of you know, AI being built into products in Sam. I'll pass it over to you uh, in a second. But if, did everyone see Max's presentation and the product presentation today? Yeah, that was great, hey? Woo! Big round, there we go. Um, you notice like, there's like co-pilots sprinkled out through all of those presentations uh, from all the different products, which I think is cool. Like, you know, just speeding up different parts of it, maybe finding out information from data. Um, and I love that. I love that idea of just enhancing a product using it. Sam, I know you look after an area or you're a part of the team that's called conversational email. So what is conversational email and how would that work? Yeah, happy to go through that. And by the way, I just want to say that when we were prepping for this entire panel, um, he was telling us about this music that was generated by AI and it was going to say our names. And Walking up here, I was so nervous to like not fall or anything. I completely missed it. And oh, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't maybe hear the song. Maybe we can play it again no, later. We'll, we'll, I'm doing an audible with the, the AD team. At They're the not going to be happy. Yeah, get off here. But yeah. so conversational email um, is basically we have this AI that's going to have these different conversations with customers, partners, leads, contacts, in order to qualify them. And when I say qualify them, I just pretty much mean to get them interested enough to want to jump onto a meeting, see a demo, talk to someone. Um, and basically set meetings for human sales reps so that they don't necessarily have to do the dirty work of BDR or uh, outreach. And the AI will then try to set meetings for these people. And the cool thing about this is with uh, Gen AI, and there's one, yeah. um, everybody's different. Every customer's different, every account's different, every partner's different. And so the messaging and emails that we want to send out to these people is going to be different. And it's going to be relevant to that person. And what makes it also cool is the replies. So when people reply back to the AI, the um, our conversational email AI will actually reply back with something relevant because people ask different questions, say the darnest things, and we want the AI to sound as human as possible responding back. So I always tell my customers, like, hey, if you ever get any cool responses from my AI, just send it over to me. And so like a couple weeks ago, we get a question, um, an email from one of the uh, partners I work with, and they're like, yeah, look at this uh, email that they sent. This one person, uh, they sent out the emails using the AI, and then someone replies back and says something like, hey, apologies, I missed your email uh, last week. I was traveling in Italy, just got back for this week. Let's meet like next, next week. And the AI takes into consideration what it says and then puts out a response where it's like, it's not something norm standard where it's like, oh, great, you want to have a meeting, let's have a meeting. It's like, hey, hope you enjoy the pizza or the pasta. Uh, have some time to clear out your calendars next week and 
we'll catch up in the following week for that meeting. So it's making that AI sound as human as possible. And it's, it sometimes gets pretty scary. Um, I also know another customer, they told me uh, uh, they were working with one of their partners and they were hosting an event similar like this and they were inviting a lot of their partners in here. And uh, the, one of the partners came up and they were like, hey, is Alice at this event? I wanna talk to her. And like the people there, they're like, Alice, we don't have an Alice on this team. Like, who is this uh -huh. Alice? But then after like three seconds, it clicked. It was, they were talking to an AI, wow. just through email. And that, you could see that person just get a little pale real quick. And he's like, oh shoot. But it, it did show well for that customer because it's like they're using technology, they're using AI to, to further enhance whatever they're trying to do. And so at the end of the day, they had a good laugh about it and, and they had a good time. So um, it's a lot of cool things happening out there in the conversational um, space. Yeah, I mean, I'm a marketer, so I love the idea of like scaling up this outreach, keeping it personal. I was a, a BDR at one point. That part kind of scares me a little bit. Uh, anyone business development in the room? Anyone send lots of emails to people? Done it you don't have to put up your hand, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like, will this, the big like elephant in the room is always, is this going to <clears throat> enhance us or is it going to essentially like replace us? What are your, you know, do you have any thoughts on that? I mean, you work with a lot of sales teams and marketing teams. I can imagine, you know, a lot of people here are marketers. They're reaching out to lots of partners at once. This is a way to humanize it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a, there's a hesitancy at first, because when I even use the conversational email tool at Sixth Sense to, to get them on board, and especially a lot of the customers I talk to, um, at the very beginning, a lot of the BDRs will really ask, like, you know, what am, what am I going to do if this AI is going to be sending out emails, right? Um, but I always like to say, it's conversational email is just email. There's a whole other portion to it in sales where it's talking to people, meeting people. Like, I'm here at this event talking to you guys where there's no way email can do any of that. But there's a lot of tasks in the BDR world and I, I've done SDR, BDR work before, it's tough. So any BDRs out there, I, I feel for you and I, I totally understand how difficult that job is. And, um, but there's a lot of lower priority leads sometimes that may not be the, 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 the focus of your day-to-day -day job. And so my, there was a, a conference that we, we went to Dreamforce a while back and we collected like you know a thousand different badge scans and I was it, it it would just take way too much time for one BDR to go through all a thousand people because you know some of those people are there anyways just to grab like that pen or that uh, whatever that was on the swag that's on their table and so the the goal of conversational email AI is to Ha to work on those like lower quality leads, contacts that you don't necessarily need, those, those mundane, tedious tasks um, that a real person that shouldn't necessarily work on. And that way, a human person can focus on higher priority tasks. So that's generally how we position conversational email. And it does save a lot of time, especially if we have a lot of like events, content downloads, like you know, none of those people are, should, be, should not be handing those over to your BDRs right away. Right. Um, but sending them through conversation and, and AI to try to drive those conversations was gonna make lives a whole lot easier. And it's not like, you know, I, like I said, I've done SDR work. It's not like it's that personal of an email. It's like, hi, first name, yeah, comma. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day at your company, right? So yeah. <laughs> maybe this will be a more human version of uh, it. More human else. version, but it's also, it's also as good as the data that is given. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's that part too, but I won't go there. there. No, but I, what I love about how you guys are talking about this, we're not thinking like, oh, it'd be cool just in the future if this happened. Like these are things you guys are doing Right now, with Gen AI, people can actually use it tomorrow if they wanted to. So how do you bring that in? There's companies of all sizes here. You guys work at you know, larger organizations. How do you get that adopted internally? How do you, you know, educate your teams or, or get people interested in it? Uh, Saruchi, I know you guys have been doing this at Minted. So was there any, I don't know, ways that you were able to do a better job of bringing it in and getting it adopted? Yeah, I think the, when AI, Gen AI, uh, started becoming a thing last year is when people started to really talk about it, even though it came out in 22. Um, the hesitancy in adoption, I think it's still a challenge, but it was very much a challenge last year. Yeah. And I think people were um, hesitating because of two reasons. One, they were just overwhelmed. There was just too much, like where do you start? Every day there's a new tool coming out. Um, so people just didn't know how to get started. The second, I think, to the point you made earlier, people were worried about, is this going to replace my job? Right? So we had to go figure out how do we uh, address both of those things. Um, we decided to have some fun with it. We um, took our marketing team and divided it up into teams. 
and gave each team a tool to play with for a week. Um, Midjourney, Dolly, Chat, GPT, like you can name it. Um, and then brought the teams back and each of the teams had to go through a presentation of whatever their learnings were. And when we did this, we actually brought our creative and marketing and all of the teams together uh, and they started to, uh, one of the presentations they did was, it was quite interesting, they were showing different images and asking the groom to guess, and you couldn't tell which was an AI-generated image versus a human-generated image, right? So the creative team started to see that this could actually work, like it's not taking away all of my power, or the, 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 we hold our brand very precious, but AI doesn't have to mean um, cheap, right? It doesn't have yeah. to mean you're deviating from your uh, brand ethos. But at the same time, um, we also started to change the jargon, the, the terminology around it to say, maybe start thinking about these tools as productivity enhancing tools. There's a lot of tools out there that we use for like email subject line writing and stuff like that. Why does that have to not be something that the copywriting team can take it and just generate 10 times more of the copy, right? So if you start thinking about it as productivity enhancing, it's not something that'll take your job away. Uh, and it actually t feels less threatening, and we've kind of now given you the chance to go learn, take the risks, uh, and do it in a way that um, can just help you be better. Mm -hmm. so that's sort of what we did. So was it marketing that led this? Like, we have a lot of marketers. Do you think that's a good entry point at an organization? Is the marketing team bringing these tools in and evangelizing well, them? It's hard to say. We actually, um, we also, the other thing we did was we created an AI task force uh, at Minted, which is made up of senior leaders from all functions. Um, and the three use cases we immediately were going after is marketing, engineering, and customer service. Because mm -hmm. you know, as you can uh, see, engineering, a lot of people talk about, can Gen AI write code? Can Gen AI uh, do all of these things? But it can, but it doesn't take away the human part of it. Like so you'd still need the thinking aspect that somebody has to bring. Somebody who understands your business nuances still has to be writing that code alongside with it. So that's one thing we started to look at. Can QA be, uh, be taken off and, and we don't need humans to do it, maybe AI can do that. Customer service is another one of those. Um, you know, I think Max's uh, presentation was the one where he was showing the questions you can answer. Yeah. Can we start to get predictive about what is a consumer gonna ask to make a, before they make a purchase, right? It's called generative Q&A. Could we actually start to solve that use case so it reduces our call volume on the customer service side of things? Right? So there's use cases can come from various places. We started to say maybe these are the three areas we tackle. In marketing, our um, hesitancy was just around how are we going to look in the uh, world, and so we had to change and approach it differently. Mm -hmm. In customer service, it was all about cost savings, uh, so they, the approach there was slightly different. So. But it can start anywhere or everywhere. <laughs> I like that it's called AI Task Force. That sounds like a Marvel movie. I'd like to do it. <laughs> right? Christy, if we do a <laughs> thing, a let's, do, let's call it AI Task Force. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, Peter, what about you from a perspective of getting customers to adopt these technologies? Like, How do you instill trust in a customer base when you're bringing something new to market because they have you know, their own leadership to answer to? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I think you know, AI has been a tremendous opportunity for us, for business and society. And, you know, I think how we develop and deploy it is really critical. And currently we have this really impressive, like we said, um, creative library that we need to make sure people know is authentic so that when they're using that, they know where it comes from, they know that they can rely on it, they know that what they're putting out there, they don't have to worry about the transparency around it, right? But within using AI tools, you now have an opportunity to really <coughs> do something creative that can complement and be very different, right? It allows people to think very differently about how they want to create, how they want to try to create, um, what they're actually able to make that could be very different than they thought about on their own. So I think the combination of using these tools just add a whole nother layer to what they can actually go out and make. And I think, you know, we were talking about this earlier, I forgot, like the world you know, AI, and I'm like, I've been in this business forever and disruption is everywhere. And for us, like, you know, recently, even, even, even now, what I was saying was, you know, people um, are gonna go out with the tools to go make, make content, but, you know, we want them to be able to try different things and be able to do that. I think what we want them to know is, hey, like, this is what's 
authentic, this is what's transparent, this is what's been trained this way, this is what this image came from. So it allows us to do that. But my point was, so digital, digital technologies exploded, right? And, and it's really, you know, the camera phone came out and photography is everywhere, yeah. right? And we figured out a way to really manage that well. And then social media came out. Now you have the ability to use visuals. Everyone uses them everywhere. So I think this is another way that we can continue to do that with technology. So I think it's exciting. Yeah, and I imagine you know, you're introducing <coughs> new technologies. There has to be a certain level of trust already in the company. Like when Max does the co-pilot, you have to already trust impact to trust you know, something that might have some risk uncertainty. I'm sure it's the same with Getty Images or Minted or Sixth Sense as well. I feel like, uh, like everything has AI in it. I saw there's, um, I don't know if you've seen this, but there's a AI powered bird feeder, which just means that AI is everything. They have a, uh -huh. I should put a link in the description of this, right? Get my promo code. Should do an affiliate for it. Um, but it's everywhere, right? So we're seeing it no matter where. So with all that like noise out there, I'm curious how, how a marketer, we've got a room full of marketers here. I know uh, Giddy Images and iStock are a brand on the impact.com platform. You have this great Gen AI image creation tool. How did you use partnerships to be able to maybe distill or explain that, Peter? Yeah, you know, um, partnerships for us was the critical piece to be able to do it. I think um, first we partnered with NVIDIA, you know, the, one of the leading innovators in the world today. And what that allowed us to do was you know, take our great strengths, our content and our metadata and partner with them on how do we can put together a tool that would be valuable and useful when people are prompting, um, having the ability to compute it. Also create a tool that would actually create something that would offset where the argument was that we need content from everywhere, we need to go on the web and get everything. But being in a position to do this and do this in a responsible way and do it with a partner that's you know, in the same presence with us really is allowing us to do that. And it wasn't just them, like as people are starting to see how the adoption's coming with that, you know, we've also been working with Bria from day one. They're another company that's going out there trying to create, you know, responsible and, and um, content that people can be able to use and trust. And recently we just announced a partnership with Pixar. So we're starting to see more and more people um, be part of this ecosystem where they want to create the tools that will allow people to have great creative work things that, again, allow us to go and not have to worry about what they're using every day. Right, so you find the right like partnerships with companies. And then how does that extend into like creators or publishers or influencers? Have you used like, I know that you guys did a program not too long ago yeah. that involves some of that. So maybe Great leading, great leading, mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, on the contributor side, when we went out and iStock has their Gen AI tool and um, we worked with Impact, who actually has been a great help with where we created this tool, right? But we don't want to tell people about it. We want to collaborate and show people how they can use it. So we worked with Impact to go out and find influencers who had areas of expertise around um, Gen AI or marketing and be in a position to help us create things and go to market and show people how the tools work and what they can create. And um, that really allowed, you know, people to see that. And I think for us, it was really big and it's worked really well. We worked with a handful of creators. They've created a bunch of content out on social media and TikTok and Instagram. And um, now we're, we're continuing with the next phase of it by showing them how we continue to use new tools and create them more and more, but it's allowing us to just let the work be organic and show itself. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, I like it when something can be simplified. It's a very like, you know, complex topic, you can get into the tech, but sometimes you just need to show how something works. So also like kind of on that same idea of like working with other partners, Ruchi, have you used Gen AI at all in your partnership workflows? Yeah, I mean, we um, moved on to Impact last year and we've been starting to use a lot of uh, Impact, the partner recommending tool that we, yeah. that's out there that uses AI uh, for it. We're seeing some pretty good success in early days. And you know, I was very excited about what Max was going through, that as the AI signals get crisper, the recommendations will get crisper. So yeah. you know, the more um, robust our data gets, because our brand, you know, of course, has stricter guidelines around who we want to work with. So if we can start to feed that into the tool, that's, um, that's I'm very, something we're excited about. The other thing that the, we do, we're kind of just starting to scratch the surface of this one. We write briefs for our creators and our influencers, and the team does it as 
an individual. It's a very generic brief. Briefs typically contain what a brand guidelines, your product, your story, the narrative, and stuff like that. But they tend to be a little bit one size fit all. Uh, and so, where I think the strength in working with partners and creators like you guys is each of you brings a very different style, a different POV. You know, you have your own way of. Um, telling the story and if our briefs can start to become personalized by taking the signals of who you are and then how do we ask you to take this product or that product and tell that story right, that's where we win, right? And I think so that's, that's the thing we're starting to um, scratch the surface but I'm hoping we yeah. will get really good at um, feeding a lot of the performance data but also style data into it and then creating the briefs out there. Yeah, I love it. Like just being able to personalize things to each individual so that you can work with lots of people in like more relevant way makes a ton of sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've talked mainly about things that you can do right now but I would like to do like a little bit of future gazing. So where do you think this is going? I'll give you each kind of a chance to say like either where you think it's going or what you might feel like is an important aspect that maybe people don't think about. And Sam, why don't we start with you and then we'll go down. Yeah, I think uh, Gen, Gen AI is coming and, um, well not coming, it's already here, but uh, definitely she be taking advantage of it. I think uh, it's just like within our conversational email, there's, it's just gonna simplify our lives. Uh, writing the emails. We don't necessarily have to spend time writing any emails. I always like to tell the story when I used to be in marketing um, and if you gave me a task uh, to, to write like three email sequence, like it'd be a week before I even began writing an email. But if I have an AI help me write the emails and then just come to me and say, hey, can you edit these three emails? It's, I'm gonna get that back to you within like an hour or two. So let's, let's, I, I think that um, we should, uh, what's the word, welcome the Gen AI and, and just start, you know, seeing where it can take us and hopefully, uh, yeah, just see what it can do for us. So I'm excited for it. I'll give a slightly different point of view. Um, so with everybody talking about Gen AI, it feels like it's taking over, uh, but we at Minted definitely believe that there is always gonna be a place for human generated, one of a kind art design and content, right? So I think the, the debate that's gonna have to ensue um, whether in this room or outside, is how do we value, like what, how do we figure out what's the value of human generated versus AI generated content? How should compensation rules uh, be defined differently? Because human content is, today we value it much higher because we don't know what AI is doing for us. In the future we don't know where AI goes, but both will exist and coexist and, and the rules will have to be defined around it. Yeah. I would just add to that, I think we see it the same way. I think it's really important um, for the creator ecosystem to be in a position to be able to take you know, advantage in the value that they create. I think the way we see um, it is not like one-time quick things. We see the ability for our creators to have recurring revenue opportunities, to be in a position that if we're making money, they're making money. Um, we're very transparent about that. If they sign up as contributors, they're told exactly how their va content placed on value, how they're paid. You know, again, you may never make everyone happy, but I think, you know, if we were not making a lot of people happy, you'd hear about it every day. Yeah, yeah. They let us know when we're not doing those things well. I think on the flip side of, you know, where people are going to be using it, we are early days and it will go really fast far. But I think for us, and what I would say to everyone is, you know, you have to embrace it, but I think there really needs to be transparency around what's being used in whatever tools you're using and how it's making. As long as you're able to know that, you can feel comfortable with what the outputs are, right? You don't want to use generative inputs to create generative outputs and like, where, where does it start? So I think those are really two important things that we say. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it's an exciting technology. It sounds like, you know, whether you're doing outreach or creating content or bringing it into your organization, and based on the hands raised, it looks like everyone's already using it, whether you've checked with your legal and IT team or not, I'm not quite sure. Um, I've checked with mine, I'm sure. Yeah, well, we, say, time, it's, right? we say it's the magic trick right now. Everybody's using it, but like, they're yeah. really, it's a magic trick. And yeah, and it's starting to like, be more pervasive, so. Um, we're out of time. I think we could talk about this forever. I am going to leave a question for you guys to talk about at happy hour and the after party that's coming up. So I asked Gen AI for a couple of things. I asked for a bonus question, which is just for you guys to talk about later, is if there were AI creators, which I think there is already, would you work with them and why? So you can talk amongst yourselves about that while you have a few drinks. I think it's like 16 times you've, we've said Gen AI, so that's how many drinks we're starting <laughs> with. 
And then I also asked, as we wrap up, I asked Gen AI for like a closing quote. So this is what came back. Remember, as Peter Drucker once said, the best way to predict the future is to create it. I think we have an amazing group of people that have been here for the event today. So all of our panelists and everyone, let's go out and create the future. And thank you so much to our panelists for today and thank you all for being here.